In case you didn't know it, there is misinformation swirling around on social media. I know, newsflash, you probably you probably weren't aware of that, but there's lots of misinformation out there. Okay, yeah, we all know that. It's all around us. But what bothers me the most is when I see it on, say, a Christian apologetics page. Right? I'm a member of this Facebook uh, group, Biblical Apologetics and Scientific Creationism Debate. I'm offended as Christian by those who are trying to defend the faith, but in their defense of the faith, they're using misinformation, false information. Right? What good does that do? What does it do to use false information to try to promote truth? And it's completely unnecessary. It's an unforced error. Now, this could be ignorance. Um, and the, the, the thing is, it is misinformation that might have been innocent originally. It was shared multiple times by multiple people, potentially, and then someone else saw it and they used it as a defense or a, an apologetic. Right? Is this coincidence or is it godsidence? <laughs> godsidence, right? Yeah. Obviously, this couldn't have happened by chance, right? So it's it's a it's a poor man's um, use of the intelligent design argument. So what's going on here? This is just uh, this is just posted today. This flower blooms only once every seven years and remains beautiful for just seven days. Isn't that incredible? two uses of sevens. And seven in scriptures is a, a term of completion, all right, of perfection, right? Lots of things come in sevens. And so here you have a plant that blooms every seven years and its flowers only last seven days. That, that surely that's a sign that couldn't have happened by chance. God must have directed things or created this plant in order to mimic or represent uh, the perfection of his creation. So it's like a great deal. You know, and, and when I go to um, Awesome Stuff 365, which has like several million members, it's not a Christian apologetics page. It's simply just like really interesting, cool information, like science tidbits and pictures and so forth. A lot of it AI, but, um, and, so I don't think that that person was intentionally was in, was intending to make this a a statement of Christian apologetics, right? A a a proof of Christianity or or God's creation. Um, but this person is saying like, oh yeah, maybe maybe it is so. So I, I'm just I want to use this just this picture this this statement, and then I'm going to show you what's underneath it. Mm, let's just go there now. So what I'm going to do today is hopefully in, in just a few minutes, I will try to correct this misinformation and teach you how a little bit of botany, because as a botanist by training uh, and having worked on uh, plants that are similar to these, um, I think I can fix some of the errors that are here. And I'm going to make my one little small contribution day today to um, directing us toward a more truthful social media. So here's the rest of this uh, story here, right? This flower blooms only once every seven years and remains beautiful for just seven days. And then look at the description by Awesome Stuff 365. This silver sword, known as the flower of patience, is a rare plant native to the volcanic slopes of Maui, Hawaii. It's true. All right. I give him credit for that. That is accurate. That is the name. And they, that is where it grows. Uh, this extraordinary plant waits up to 50 years to bloom showcasing a stunning display of purple flowers before it dies. Profound symbol of patience and resilience. This is a feel good, learn from nature sort of Facebook uh, page. But you notice the disjunct here? <laughs> this flower only blooms every seven years. And then in the description, this extraordinary plant waits up to 50 years to bloom. Okay, so which one of these is right? <laughs> which is it? Is it? Is it every seven years or is it up to 50 years? I can also tell you it's not seven days either. All right, let me tell you a little bit about this plant. Um, this plant is uh, a member of the sunflower family. Now you might be, you might look at this, and you might say to yourself, well, that doesn't look like a sunflower to me because you're, because you're visualizing Helianthus annus, which is the, the popular uh, big sunflower, right? But there are 20,000 species of sunflowers. And there's a group of sunflowers in its own subfamily uh, that are on the Hawaiian Islands called the silver swords. 
it's thought that they're all related to one sunflower that uh, migrated to Hawaii, did migrate itself, brought like on a bird's feather, stuck to a bird's feather. Bird brought it to Hawaii, the plant started to grow there, reproduced, and eventually grew and expanded its populations across all the Hawaiian Islands. And this is one species of those 20 or more species that are alive today. It's a very spectacular plant. It has this basal rosette of leaves, which is, um, is can, it grows at high elevations. Uh, it's in a, it can grow in a dry, very, very cold environment. It's a pretty tough plant, slow growing. And the way this plant, uh, what its life cycle is, is it spends a lot of time uh, developing vegetative material. That's the, the basal rosette of leaves. And then at some point, it will throw up this huge long stalk that you see here. And this is called an inflorescence. An inflorescence is a group of flowers, right? It's a, it's a bunch of flowers on one stalk. And as I'm gonna show you, each one of the things that looks like a flower here, if you know anything about uh, the sunflowers, I'm gonna teach you the basics of sunflower anatomy so that you'll be able to go out and recognize any sunflower that's out there uh, of the 20,000 members of that family. But what looks like a flower to you is actually a composite because this is the other name for the sunflower family is the compositi. There's the asteraceae, which asters are sunflowers. Uh, but the older name, the older scientific name was the compositi. I'm old enough that that's what I learned was the compositi. And it's a composite of many, many flowers together to make a head, which then has the appearance of a single flower. Oh, but back to at some point, in this case, anywhere from three to five years up to 90 years. So potentially after 90 years, it throws up this stalk with a whole bunch of flowers, which don't last seven days. This is a multi-week process uh, in which these flowers last for many, many days each. And then the plant dies, right? Flowers go to seed. The rest of the plant dies. That's the end of its life. It only reproduces one time, All right? So it spends many, many years basically gathering energy uh, slowly over time, putting that energy in reserves, probably in its roots and in its leaves. And then it just takes all that energy and it, pay, it produces this giant blooming structure, right? Produces thousands, some tens of thousands of seeds. And then when they dry, they scatter. And hopefully at least one or two will eventually be able to grow up into another Hawaiian silver sword. So just telling you that tells you there's something wrong with this other image over here. This flower blooms only once every seven years. Well, the same plant doesn't bloom every seven years. It blooms one time during its lifetime. Uh, and it's not after seven years. I mean, there may be a few of them that bloom after seven years, but that is not a regular pattern of theirs at all. I have no idea where they came up with that. I don't know what the, the origin of this image and the text here is. I don't know who put that together, but and I have no idea where they got that information. Seems completely made up to me. And how long do the flowers last? Seven days? I doubt anyone's actually done any measurements to see like how long, you know, from the moment the flower appears, like opens, does it last just seven days? Highly doubtful. I think some of the flowers may only last a few days, it's possible some of the flowers may last a couple of weeks. I doubt there's any kind of consistency to seven days. And that also has to do with the fact that um, I'm sure the person who put this together is thinking the whole thing is a flower. But let's take a look at the inside of a sunflower. All right, so here's the inside of a helianthus, which is your, your more what you probably stereotypically think of as a sunflower. And so you have this huge head and, you know, at the periphery of the head, you have these what look like petals at the edge, right? These things look like petals, but they're not petals. They're individual flowers. It's a little hard to see here, but this is, this is actually the fusion of several petals together. And if you were to follow this toward the base, you'd find that this is, comes from a single unit like this. Actually, it might be easier to start with. The, those are called the uh, ray petals. And these are called, sorry, the ray flowers. And these are called the disc flowers because these are all individual flowers. This is a flower, this is a flower, this is a flower, this is a flower, this flower, this flower, all right? There's, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of individual flowers here in this composite. 
and the composite, when it flowers, has the appearance of a single large flower. Right? So it's a bunch of flowers that get together and act like a single flower to attract pollinators, of which you see one right here. So let's go back over here. So you see this flower right here? There's one, two, three, four, five. There's actually five petals that are fused together in a little cup. And then here is the anther, all right? Uh, and this, uh, actually, these are the anthers, the male parts. And then at the very center is the female stigma. And so when this gets pollinated, each flower is going to produce, has an ovule with an egg in it. And each flower is going to produce one egg. And that egg is going to grow into a form of a nut, which is a sunflower seed, right? When you crack open your sunflower seed, you're cracking open the ovary wall, which is hardened to get the the nutty the, the meaty material out from the inside which is the inner portion of the ovary uh, which is developed into the fruit that you're eating all right so each flower produces one seed but there's hundreds of flowers so therefore hundreds of seeds in this head the the ray flowers which are out here each one of these things that looks like a petal is an individual flower that's five few petals together um, I don't believe in most cases they don't have their own like sexually active parts and so they are sort of neutral and they don't produce seeds. So now each one opens up. Now you can see that this flower, most sunflowers, they don't all open at one time. They open from the edge toward the middle. And so these are the more mature ones. They're going to get pollinated. Then, then the, the next ones start to open. And then these start to open. These start to open. These start to open. These start to open. And that's why a sunflower often lasts for weeks at a time. From a human perspective, sunflowers are great because they, they're around for a long time. The reason they're around for a long time, though, is they're going through these successive stages of opening the flowers, which does what? It means that uh, they're not get, trying to get poll everything pollinated at one time. There probably aren't enough pollinators to do that. They're opening them up, and every day pollinators can come, and they're pollinating those few flowers that are there that also the pollinators have to move from one flower to another because there's only a certain number of flowers open. And so that means they're going to have to go to another flower and they'll come to this other flower and then go to another flower. What does that do? Well, that helps cross pollinate, which is good for the sunflowers for gene flow, moving genetic variants around the population and getting lots of variation in their offspring. And so all of this is a, you can think of it as it's a strategy, right? It's the sunflower strategy for survival, for gene flow, for how they're going to attract pollinators. Um, but back to this, um, this image, right? And this little blurb say, and these flowers are open seven days. Well, what do they mean by seven days? Um, each one of these flowers isn't open for exactly seven days. In some sunflowers, it may be that each flower only really lasts for a day or two. In many cases, the flower is open for as long as it needs to be until it gets pollinated. And then once it's pollinated, then it begins to look like it decays. But actually what's happening is the ovary starts to grow into a seed. And so you can't say it flowers for seven days, right? It's flowering for as long as it needs to flower. In some cases, if there aren't many pollinators around, it's going to flower for a long period of time. And if there's a lot of pollinators around, it might be one day. 24 hours is all you need to get pollinated. So anyway... I just wanted to, this was just an excuse to talk about sunflowers because I like sunflowers and uh, I, the, the lab that I worked in uh, to do my PhD was a specialist uh, on sunflowers and sunflower taxonomy, identifying sunflowers. And although I didn't myself work on sunflowers, I was surrounded by people who were very involved in trying to identify and understand sunflowers. Um, and back to our friendly image here. All right. It just... It, 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 uh, I, I'm not, over, I'm not like, this isn't the worst thing that's ever happened on this uh, particular page. This isn't the worst misinformation I've ever seen. It's just kind of sad. It's like, um, it's easy to take advantage of people with simple misinformation for which other people take. And now they're going to, you know, this person put it on their personal page and so therefore they're they're telling their friends there's this amazing plant out there that you know it flowers every seven years and its flowers last seven days and this is just an amazing sign that god has given us i mean all of god's creatures and things are amazing in their own ways um, but there's 
those are not facts. Those are not true facts about this plant. So how can that be a sign of its kinship to biblical numerology, right? If those numbers aren't even accurate. So coincidence or godsidence? Oh, I said this was going to be short, but I'm sure I could go on for 30 more minutes about the nuances of how this is actually coincidence and godsidence. In other words, you know, <laughs> creation is, is God's doing, all right? then the properties that this organism has are the result of God's creative capacities. And we'd have to have a long discussion about exactly how God acts in the world and so forth. I have no idea how to wrap this up. I didn't, didn't, think, about, I didn't think about beforehand what I was going to do when I got to the end or what my message was here. It's just a you know, coincidence or godsidence. It's not the right question. Right? It's an amazing plant. Hawaiian silver swords are incredible plants with amazing adaptations to the Hawaiian environment. They are unique. They all silver swords are only found in the Hawaiian Islands, and most of them are only found on one single island, adapted to just one single area of that island. So that is amazing. That's amazing design in a way. That's an amazing, um, an amazing plant. All right. Did I mean she know where it happened? I mean, she remember. Wow, is that the store down the street? Hmm. Um, Saturday. It, it looks like I'm pretty definitely gonna go see my dad because I, he um he said they're available and I need to. I haven't seen him in a while. So this Facebook page is just chock full of far worse misinformation, right? misunderstandings, um, uh, you know, promotion of horrible ideas. This is a mild example. But if I can like make one little tiny difference in this world and, uh, and, and somebody who knows a little bit more about sunflowers uh, and won't get hoodwinked by um, simplistic uh, intelligent design arguments like this, then that I feel like I've done something today. All right, so with that, you know, I'll sign off. We'll see you when we see you.